So my name is Suraj Kaplan. I'm with the Division of Cardiology at the University of Pennsylvania. And part of what I'm going to be discussing here is the associations between hiatal hernia, GERD, and atrial fibrillation. So we know what atrial fibrillation is to some degree. Typically, we identify it as a syndrome in the grand context of arrhythmic disease in the sense that it can coexist with multiple other um, medical factors, sleep apnea, um, obesity, and other things we always take into account whenever we treat any patient with atrial fibrillation. Currently, we principally manage atrial fibrillation with medications or ablation therapy, knowing that the pulmonary veins are often thought of as a primary focal trigger, though other triggers, either the beta marshal or superior vena cava or other areas of the heart or extracardiac structures, might be present. And thus, treatment is usually geared towards the targeted use of rate of rhythm control, meds, or ablation. Furthermore, there are known structural and autonomic components in the pathogenesis of atrial fibrillation, and this will relate directly to what we're thinking about and what we've researched on the role of hiatal hernia and gastroesophageal reflux in the genesis of atrial fibrillation. Namely, as we understand in atrial fibrillation now, there's both sympathetic and parasympathetic mediated forms of atrial fibrillation. This vaguely mediated form of atrial fibrillation being noted as far back in the 1970s by Kumel et al. and by studies done by them, prior to that primarily being thought of as a sympathetically driven phenomenon. Furthermore, aspects such as atrial size, in particular the left atrial size, the pressure on the left atrium, such as in decomposite heart failure where you might get an increased wet pressure, are known to associate with the onset of atrial fibrillation. Now, changing topics a little bit, hiatal hernia is, of course, a protrusion or herniation of the upper part of the stomach into the thorax through the diaphragm. In fact, it's a very prevalent phenomenon, especially in um, the United States, with up to 60% of individuals more than 50 years of age have probably having hiatal hernias with increasing prevalence as people age, often being associated with poor diets and especially poor fiber intake. And it's often associated with acid reflux, though most patients with hiatal hernias are asymptomatic. And seen here is a picture of what we typically see with a hiatal hernia. And we'll see shortly the relationship between the hiatal hernia and the heart and how the association may develop in terms of how atrial fibrillation might relate to hiatal hernias. There has been a long noted association between gastrointestinal disease and atrial fibrillation. Specifically, postprandial atrial fibrillation is, was a previously noted phenomenon in both case reports and case series. Not an aggressively studied phenomenon, but definitely noted. And oftentimes, patients, especially with proximal atrial fibrillation, will have noted postprandial onset of palpitations, which often in the setting of a Holter monitor will turn out to be atrial fibrillation. Furthermore, atrial tachyarrhythmias have previously been described in patients with hiatal hernia and gastroesophageal reflux disease, with studies dating back into the early 1970s demonstrating that there is a definite association between the two. There are multiple possible mechanistic associations. One is, when you have a hiatal hernia, you get a direct mechanical effect on the left atrial wall. And what I mean by this is, when you have a protrusion of the stomach up through the diaphragm, you can actually encounter the posterior portion of the left atrium actually being compressed a little bit by the actual stomach slash esophagus. Furthermore, there's an increased risk of gastroesophageal reflux disease in the setting of hiatal hernia, and as noted previously, there is a noted association between GERD and atrial fibrillation. Shown here is an anatomical description of the relationship between the heart and the abdominal viscera in the thoracic cavity. This person in particular had a very large hiatal hernia. However, you can tell that there are portions of the abdominal cavity that are immediately posterior to the heart and thus could cause some increased compression on the posterior left atrium. In terms of the association between GERD specifically and atrial fibrillation, GERD is frequently results in local inflammation of the esophageal mucosa. Furthermore, GERD is much more frequent in hiatal hernia. The local inflammation and the frequency in hiatal hernia might lead to either activation of autonomic nerves that are close by, or sometimes cause some inflammation immediately adjacent to the heart that might result in further um, tendency to go into atrial fibrillation. In addition to all these, one thing we always need to consider is the parasympathetic component, because as we know, the process of digesting, the process of eating, is very much associated with a vaguely mediated event. And thus, vagal activation during digestion actually may be more marked with hiatal hernia. And thus, what we might see is in the setting of eating, in the setting of a hiatal hernia, and with the setting of increased reflux, we have a perfect storm of things along with the autonomic activation that can induce the atrial fibrillation. The question is, is this all comorbidity or is this coincidence? Namely, patients with hiatal hernia are often obese. 
They have may have sleep apnea or other comorbidities such as heart failure, which increase the predilection towards atrial fibrillation. Furthermore, there are few randomized case series to define the risk of atrial fibrillation with or without hiatal hernia. In many of the studies that have been done, the comorbid degree of GERD or esophagitis is not clear. And at least one prior study has suggested that resolution of the AFib might occur with repair of the hiatal hernia, namely that if the hiatal hernia is repaired with an instant application, we might actually see resolution. Further support is from a study which we'll be presenting this time at Heart Rhythm Society 2010, which demonstrated an epidemiologic association between a hiatal hernia and atrial fibrillation, particularly in young patients, with young patients described as those less than 55 years of age. Looking at 111,000 429 patients, we found that about 5.3% of those patients with hiatal hernia also had atrial fibrillation. Notably, that prevalence was higher than in age and sex match populations, with the risk of atrial fibrillation in these young patients about 13-fold higher in young males and 15-fold higher in young females. How, however, notably, there was a higher incidence of heart failure and mortality in these patients with hiatal hernia than in the general population. However, it's also becoming clear that various diseases may contribute to or cause atrial fibrillation. For example, obstructive sleep apnea is recently noted in the ACCHA guidelines um, related to sleep apnea and cardiovascular disease. And the reality is that the comorbidities that we consider when associating a hiatal hernia with other factors such as BMI or obesity need to also be taken into association with other factors such as sleep apnea or in terms of the actual heart size or in terms of the ejection fraction, or in terms of right-sided function. One question that obviously comes out of this is, if we treat the hernia, do we treat the arrhythmia? And unfortunately, there are few case reports and series that demonstrate this. The largest one was one by Hughes et al. in 1971 that studied a small series of five patients. And what they demonstrated was that induced gastric acid reflux, as measured by esophageal pH measurement, was what immediately preceded atrial fibrillation in these patients. Furthermore, interestingly, atropine would block the occurrence of atrial fibrillation, partly supporting what we've been talking about before regarding the autonomic role. And finally, after an instant application to repair the hiatal hernia, they found in four-year follow-up that there was no atrial fibrillation occurrence after repair. However, there are several limitations of all of the studies, including ours to date. Namely, the, for one, it's the comorbidities, because all of these patients need to be aggressively studied for other comorbid risk factors to really get a picture of what is coming first. Is it really hiatal hernia related to atrial fibrillation, or is it a perfect storm of multiple other factors going on with the patient, such as poor diet, heart failure, obesity, that might be contributing? Furthermore, patients who identified with hiatal hernia are a select, likely already symptomatic population. In other words, many of these patients likely already have reflux or are presenting for other issues because not everybody necessarily gets a chest x-ray to demonstrate the presence of hiatal hernia even though they walk with that diagnosis. The GI symptomatology may not always correlate with the presence of reflux or the size of the hernia. In other words, some people can have very large hernias and never be symptomatic and never have any reflux, but others may have small hernias and might experience both. And this leads us to future paths of study. First off, we don't understand what the precise mechanism of association is. For example, is it left atrial compression? Is it all mechanical? Is it all hyperautonomic tone? Is it all led by inflammatory mediators in the setting of reflux? And noting that, the question becomes, does the size of the hernia, the type of hiatal hernia, noting that there are several different types that you might see, or concomitant reflux matter? In other words, larger hernias may intuitively be more likely to be associated with other diseases, such as atrial fibrillation, because they might cause more compression. Furthermore, GERD has been associated with atrial fibrillation risk, as noted previously, but again, not every single person with a hiatal hernia develops reflux. The other question is, what degree do the other comorbidities contribute on a larger scale? And simply put, we don't know that, especially in our retrospective study. Again, is it the presence of reflux, a hernia, or other factors that contribute to the risk of atrial fibrillation onset? So the question in the end is, what is the actual association between a hiatal hernia and atrial fibrillation? And until we determine that, it's going to be hard to say that treat the atrial fibrillation by treating the hiatal hernia or whether or not we should even be going along that route. However, there are clear mechanistic and epidemiologic associations that need to be taken into account and lead to further study in the future.